Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. This is Chris Cottrell, and I have a slightly different video for you today. This topic has recently caught the attention of some of us here in this whole Common Impact slash Younger Dryas community. And while I'm not trying to make a direct connection to the YD Impact event, what we have here really is quite a mystery. Uh, and as you guys know, I really do like a good mystery. Now, the Miami Meteorite Crater, or the MMC for short, uh, was first officially discovered back in 2012 by Mr. Corey Bainey uh, using recently updated NOAA bathymetry data for the Miami area. Shortly after that, Mr. Charles O'Dale added the ring structure to his Crater Explorer website, where it's been tentatively labeled as a young impact feature. Since then, however, very little has been done to confirm or at the very least deny whether or not this structure is a meteorite crater or not. Uh, but in 2017, the name was added to Google Earth for this area, and uh, which is just off the coast of Miami. And a few of us here in the community have been looking into this a little bit further, and you can read about that over on George Howard's website, The Cosmic Test. Uh, and I'll have some details in the description below. So let's take a let's take a look at a few things here and see if we can apply some scientific thinking to the mystery of the Miami meteorite crater. Okay, so this is the location of the supposed Miami meteorite crater right here. Uh, it's about one mile off the coast of Miami's Fisher Islands, which is right here, and Virginia Key, which is right here, and most of you would probably recognize South Beach of Miami right here. Uh, and as you can see, there is definitely a ring structure with a central peak only about 20 to 30 feet under the current ocean surface. In fact, there are actually two ring structures overlapping each other, uh, but the rings to the northeast are more difficult to make out. Uh, but I, I also have, uh, oh, there's also a strange debris pile just to the, you can actually see it really well right here, just to the northwest. And this sediment outflow to the east is very prominent as well. Uh, now, I will say that the location right here is a bit discerning, and uh, let's go and take a look at why, why I think that. Uh, the first thing I noticed was the entire area has been subjected to major engineering projects multiple times over the past 100 plus years. Uh, and this ring structure very well could be the result of some anthropogenic, you know, or human caused uh you know, caused during that length of time. Uh, if we, you know, right here, we have a huge construction project uh, called the Government Cut, uh, and that's to the north. And I will be talking more about that here in just a minute. And then we have the Virginia Key sewage pipeline that runs just to the south of this ring structure. And as a matter of fact, the ring structure is right here in this whole area uh, has been determined to be a spoil area uh, due to its proximity to the cut. You can see it actually matches the cut itself. Uh, so, the, so again, there's a lot going on here. Uh, this image, by the way, was created by a Mr. Mark, uh, Mr. Eric Newgard, uh, and I got it from the Miami Meteorite Research Foundation's Facebook page. Uh, and I, I suggest you guys head over there and kind of check out what they have going on on the Facebook page. All right, let's take a look at the construction of the government cut real quick. You know, first... Uh, first authorized by Congress back in 1902, the cut was designed to give direct shipping access to the Port of Miami. Uh, before 1905, when the government cut was completed, ships would have to go all the way down south past the Cape of Florida uh, and then back up to Miami. Uh, and my first thought was that perhaps this circular structure, you know, this, this ring structure was the result of the original dredging, you know, over 100 years ago. Uh, I spent, I spent uh, you know, I actually sent these images here to a buddy of mine who's worked on a coastal Georgia dredge for the past 15 years or so, and he shared them with uh, some even more experienced dredgers in the area. Uh, and they all agreed that the sediment outflow to the east, this area right here, does look like dredge spoil, very well could be dredge spoil, but they were absolutely clueless about the ring structure itself. Uh, and this was actually also confirmed by a friend of George Howard, uh, who is also in the dredging industry. Uh, another thing that was brought to my attention was most of the material dredged by the formation of the government cut was used to increase the real estate of Miami, uh, including the expansion of Fisher Island, which is right here. They actually blasted uh, or they dredged uh, the government cut right here and they used the spoil to expand the island, actually formed the island of Fisher, Fisher Island there. 
Uh, and so the, the the spoil would have been way too val- valuable to just dump unnecessarily into the ocean at the time, you know, which I totally agree with. You know, it's a good point. Uh, however, it's also important to point out that the dredging was done very differently then than it is done today. You know, back then they used huge steam shovels, uh, they, you know, to scoop out the debris uh, instead of pumping like we do today. Uh, could this ring structure be a secondary result of the dredging process? You know, perhaps a mooring location uh, at some point over the past 100 years um, formed that ring structure. So let's take a look at that. Uh, you know, so the way mooring works, uh, if you, you know, you have a central location where a super heavy anchor or a large block of concrete is located on one end, and there's a large float on the other end connected by a system of heavy gauged chain and rope. Uh, when a large ship or a barge approaches, uh, they connect to the predetermined mooring instead of dropping their own anchors, you know, just anywhere. Now, the wind, the tides, and the ocean currents uh, would cause uh, the moored ship or ships, you know, to move around in a, a, a uniform circular motion around that central mooring point. And remember, we do have two ring structures here. Uh, could these radiating rings moving away from the central peak be actual drag marks caused by by mooring chains at some point in the past? You know, maybe, but there are a few key reasons why this may also not be the case. Uh, you know, first, the distance uh, from the central peak to the outer ring, rings is well over a thousand feet. So this whole structure has a radius of a thousand feet, uh, or it's actually over two thousand feet in diameter. It seems very. Uh, you know, it seems like, you know, big time overkill to use a chain that long for a mooring that's only in 20 feet of water. Uh, and even if a chain that long was used, uh, I can only imagine how heavy it would have to, you know, how heavy it would have had to have been. Um, also, with that kind of weight, I also highly doubt that the drag marks, uh, if they even could be made, would be so uniform. Uh, the second major reason why I think uh, there would be some doubt on this hypothesis, I want to go and get into here in a few minutes. Uh, but first, I want to discuss another major engineering project that took place back in the 1950s, just south of this ring structure. And that's a construction of the Miami-Dade uh, or Virginia Key uh, sewage outfall pipeline. Uh, so today, today this pipeline has been dubbed, and I'm paraphrasing here, Miami's butthole, uh, and it runs out about three and a half miles offshore and down to a depth of over 110 feet before it spews out approximately 140 million gallons of partially treated sewage into the ocean every single day. And that's today, you know. And I hear the, <laughs> I hear the fishing over this area is fantastic, um, but this hasn't always been the case. You know, when the pipeline was first originally built back in 1953, the pipeline extended out to only one mile from the treatment plant before dumping its pre-Clean Water Act waste into the shallow waters. Uh, and it continued to do so for a few decades, you know, until, <laughs> until poop started to wash up onto the shore behind President Nixon's beach home. Uh, he wasn't going to have that. And so the federal government stepped in and extended the pipeline to its current lab length and depth. Uh, needless to say, could the MMC, could this meteorite, you know, Miami meteorite crater be the location of the original butthole of Miami? <laughs> um, you know, although it's a few hundred yards to the north, the MMC is almost exactly one mile from the current shoreline and definitely in the vicinity. But upon further research, um, there just really isn't any evidence to suggest that a pipeline ever went in that direction. You know, it's close, but it never actually went in that direction. Uh, and if we had, you know, if it had, we should still be able to see some remnants of the infrastructure, at least to get it there. Uh, now, the real kicker for me that helps cross this smelly possibility, as well as the mooring possibility off the list, at least somewhat, uh, is the is that the raised rings um, that we find here on the structure appear to be in the actual solid limestone bedrock itself. You know, it's not piles of rubble and debris, as I first thought. Uh, and this is coming from the firsthand accounts of a notable marine biologist in that area uh, who's actually dove this site. Uh, we've been in communication over the past few weeks, and I have no reason to doubt his assessment. Uh, but if this is the case, and... 
you know, it makes a, a modern anthropogenic cause more difficult to pinpoint. You know, that limestone is hard, solid rock. Um, you know, it would have taken either a really, really, really long time um, or something major to to carve those rings out. Now, per perhaps perhaps then, you know, we aren't looking at the results of modern humans. But instead, we could be looking at the remains of a more distant human occupation. Uh, and would that be unheard of? Absolutely not. You know, stone circles left behind by forgotten Native American tribes are not uncommon in South Florida. In fact, just four and a half miles away and in direct eyesight of the MMC is the Miami Circle at Brickell Point, uh, which was discovered back in 1998. Um, while much smaller than the MMC, uh, this perfect circle cut directly into limestone measures just under 40 feet and has been accredited to the Tequesta uh, tribe at you know at around two thousand years ago, you know could this be just a dwelling site, uh, or was it built as more of a memorial looking out through the original channel towards the ring structure that's now under twenty feet of water? You know who knows at this point it's, it's all speculation. But you know for more information about this uh, site, you can check out one of uh, Chuck's videos over at his uh, CF Apps Seven Eight Six Five YouTube channel. I'll have a, a link to that right here. Uh, he does a great job describing this site, uh, as he does with all of his videos. You know, check him out while you while you're there. Um, you can get uh, you can get his video again by clicking on the link above. Um, so, anyways, um, so so is this ring structure man made, uh, whether it be in the distant or more recent past, or is this an actual honest to goodness impact crater? Well, again, it's it's not so easy to tell, you know, because we find a central peak in its structure, uh, it would be considered a complex crater. Uh, but the concentric circles are not usually common among complex craters, especially ones of this size. Some some of the really, really big ones, perhaps, but these really small ones, not really. Uh, usually we would find the uh, raised central peak inside of one large impact hole or bowl. Um, and we don't see that here. If it is a crater, um, could the structure of, of limestone, you know, the bedrock itself, have played a part? Perhaps. Uh, could this be the result of a near-ground bolide explosion instead of a direct impact? Again, you know, I, I just really don't know. We don't have enough information here. <sighs> so, you know, as I said, this is a really, really good mystery. Uh, is there a more recent explanation out there that we haven't thought of yet? I'm still kind of leaning in that direction, but I have not been able to fully clear anything off the plate yet either. Uh, there are many questions yet to be answered, including some I'm sure that we haven't even thought of yet. Uh, and, you know, perhaps the only way to get a little bit closer to the bottom of this thing is to actually head down there and investigate the area for ourselves. And, uh, you know, wouldn't that be awesome? Some South Florida sunshine to shed some light on this thing. <laughs> Um, so anyways, guys, stay tuned. Um, you know, we got some 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 plans in, in the works here. We'll see what we can do. Uh, if you have any ideas about what you think this could be, uh, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, you know, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, or as always, feel free to email me at dabblers.den at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.